In this video, we're going to talk about proving trigonometric identities using several useful techniques that can help us for different situations. All right, so first of all, we've got some general strategies here. When we are proving an identity, here we have an identity example down here. And we want to prove that the left side is really equal to the right side. And so it's useful to begin by starting with one side of the uh, expression, uh, one side of the identity, and moving to the other side. Okay, And we want, to, we want to use steps that are easily seen, so no giant genius steps here. So we're going to start by copying down one side, and usually it's the more complex side, cosine squared of x plus cosine to the fourth of x. All right, so we've started with one side of our equation, our identity. And uh, when we're proving identities, keep in mind here, we're not going to be doing things to both sides of the equation. We're not solving an equation. We're just really simplifying this side until it looks like this. So we're going to kind of take some clues here from the end. We're going to maybe try, uh, we notice, hey, there's cosine here, it's cosine squared, and there's cosine squared here. What if we factor out cosine squared? So we're going to pull out cosine squared from both terms, and we end up with cosine squared x, and the leftover is sine squared plus, and if you factor out, this is cosine to the fourth power, so if we factor out cosine squared, well, we have a cosine squared left. And you can double check. If you distribute this out, you'll get what we started with there. Well, that's nice because we noticed that this expression right here is really just worth 1. So we have cosine squared of x times 1. And I'm going to write that to kind of show that if anyone's reading this who's not listening, they could say, hey, I see what happened. He changed that to 1 because we have an identity that says sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. And so 1 times cosine squared is cosine squared of x. So uh, we have reached the end of our proof. And we see that the left side from up above becomes the right side. That's what we're going for. Some other general strategies here. Uh, when we start with one side like we did before, we always want to usually want to begin with the more complicated side and work to less complicated. Okay, uh, And we can always change things into sines and cosines. That can be useful. And if we have fractions, we'll see that it's useful to combine those fractions. So let's try this out. We want to start with the more complicated side, which is the left side in this case. Sine of u plus cosine u and cotangent u. We might think about factoring, but we notice that there's no terms that are the same here. We do know that we can change cotangent into sines and cosines, so let's go ahead and try that. We have sine of u plus cosine of u, and cotangent we know is cosine over sine. Okay, well, doesn't seem to do any much. It would be nice if these canceled, but they don't. So, well, one thing we can do is we can go ahead and multiply this. This is, this is cosine over 1 times cosine over sine, and so that's going to give us cosine squared of u over sine of u. And then we say, well, man, Still don't see much. Well, let's go ahead and try to make this into one fraction. Let's get a common denominator. So if we multiply that left one here by sine over sine, then we become sine squared over sine plus cosine squared over sine. Now we have a common denominator, which you got to have when you add fractions. When we add fractions, the denominator stays the same, and the top gets added. Well, in this case, we're going to add them, but we can't simplify them. We know that from algebra. And what do you know? The top part here becomes 1. And so this is 1 over sine of u. And finally, we know that that is equal to cosecant of u by our reciprocal identities. So here again, we saw that the left-hand side 
became the right hand side. Okay? Left hand side becomes the right hand side from above. And this is something that will happen often where we combine fractions here. So if you have two terms and we notice we wanted to get one term, try to make them into fractions, get a common denominator, and then, then we have one term that can be simplified. Some more things that are useful here. Uh, this identity, a plus b times a minus b equals a squared minus b squared, we sometimes call it a difference of two squares. That is often useful to us because we have lots of identities that look like this form, a squared minus b squared. Um, we know sine squared plus 1 equals cosine squared. Actually, sorry, let's make that uh, 1 minus sine squared equals cosine squared. 1 minus cosine squared equals sine squared. There's a connection between secant squared and tangent squared. we got all these identities that involved squares being added or subtracted. So this can be really useful. And always keep in mind where we're headed. This is not completely simplifying always. We just want to change the left side into the right side. So uh, here we have sine t over 1 minus cosine t. Well, it doesn't seem like we can do very much with that. And so... But we do notice that it's a fraction. We might say, man, I wish that was 1 minus cosine squared because I know that 1 minus cosine squared has a connection. We remember sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t is 1. And if I subtract cosine squared from both sides, I get sine squared of t uh, equals 1 minus cosine squared of t. Okay? Well, that's kind of cool, but we don't have cosine squared. Well, no problem. What we're going to do is we're going to take the fraction that we have, sine of t over 1 minus cosine. We're going to multiply that by the conjugate we call it, 1 plus cosine of t. 1 plus cosine of t. All right? And what happens? Well, on top, we have sine of t times 1 plus cosine of t. And by the way, I don't see any need to, to simplify that. Simplifying the, this right here, distributing, won't do much for us. It's not going to cancel anything. So if it's not going to cancel and we don't see a need for it, we might want to leave it alone for now. But if we look at this, 1 minus cosine times 1 plus cosine, well, that's just this right here, a minus b times a plus b. And when we multiply those out, the middle terms cancel, and we're left with a squared minus b squared, the first thing squared minus the second thing squared. Well, what's that? The first thing squared is 1 squared, which is 1, minus the second thing squared, cosine squared. So that's cosine squared of t. And we know from what we just found up here that 1 minus cosine squared t is equal to sine squared of t. So we have sine t times 1 plus cosine t all over. We can replace this with sine t squared. And we notice that one of these is going to cancel with one of these leaving us with 1 plus cosine t all over sine t. That's nice. So we cancel some stuff out, looking a little simpler. But this still doesn't look like what we have here. Notice that now there's two terms here. We only have one term. Well, remember when we divide uh, an expression, we have to divide both terms. So sine divides both of these. So we're going to break up this sum as 1 over sine t plus cosine t over sine t. Now we have the plus that we were looking for here, and 1 over sine t is cosecant t. There it is. So again, keep in mind where we're headed. And cosine over sine is cotangent. That's nice because that's what we're looking for up here. So we have cotangent of t. And there we have it. So the left side, once again, 
has become the right side. So the left side of our identity is right here, has become the right side, which we have right here. All right, and so that's how we prove an identity. So keep in mind those strategies, and you'll do well. Good luck.